good afternoon viewers and subscribers welcome back to geography world channel where for today this video will focus on the may june 2018 geography paper 2 where for this video i will be going through the physical question that is question number two on the paper now this is just how the CSET geography paper looks so you have your instruction at the front and then you're given your map reading question after the map reading question you have the physical question and the physical question is what we will be working on today but i just want to go ahead and show you how the paper is designed so this is how where the physical paper begins the physical question and then after the physical you have the human question and the final question on the paper is the human environmental for today we're going to focus on the physical question now the first thing on the physical question is that you're shown a graph and this graph is basically showing you the average rainfall and temperature for port of spain in trinidad for 2016 and you are to answer the four five questions that are related to the graph so the first question asks let me scroll down a bit there's a climber graph and the first question asks which month has the highest rainfall now i'm going to zoom in a bit so that you are able to examine the graph a bit all right so the climber graph it has two different types of graphs on it good so you have a line graph and you have a bar graph good so the line graph is the one that we use to basically identify the temperature for the region so the line graph shows you the temperature and the temperature is located on the left hand side the reading for it and then we have the rainfall which is you the bars are used to represent the rainfall and the rainfall is represented on the right hand side so the question is asking us to locate which one has the highest rainfall so the, you're looking at rainfall you have to look at the bar graph so which one of the bar graphs is the tallest now the bar graph here is the tallest and that is august so your answer would be august and that would you will be rewarded with one mark now the thing with cx is that you must give your answers in a complete sentence so august is the month with the highest rainfall the month with the highest rainfall is august please ensure that you give you give your answer in a complete sentence so question on the paper is to determine the annual temperature range now a question like this usually gives students the creeps and students usually get it wrong because they don't know the difference now on the graph for the temperature what we're seeing is the mean monthly temperature now the mean monthly temperature is where they basically add up the daily temperature every, for each day in the month and then then divide by the amount of days within that month to get the mean monthly temperature after getting the mean monthly temperature what the question is asking for is the annual range of temperature so all you have to do is to basically subtract the coldest month from the hottest month so let me go back to the question and we can look at it so the coldest from the hottest month so let me zoom in a bit so based on the temperature graph the line graph here the hottest temperature would be at 27 which is at, Ma, which is at May right here 27 based on the line graph is at 27 now the lowest temperature would be at 25 which is directly on the line so 25 from 27 gives us two degrees so the annual temperature range would be two degrees celsius 
very good. Now, the, on, the third question asks us to calculate the rainfall for the two wettest per month. So, all you're going to do is identify the two wettest months. So, here we know already know that August is the wettest month. We need to know the second wettest month, which is September. Now, September would have almost been at 210. So it's about 209, 209 millimeters and August is above 240, it's almost halfway, so it's about 230, sorry, it's 242, so it is 242. So all you have to do now is to add 209 to 242 and the total that you would have gotten would have been 451 millimeters. So between those two months, 451 millimeters of rain fell. And then the question went on to ask, which month has the least rainfall? So looking at it, which one of these months has the least amount of rainfall? And based on the bar graph, the shortest one would have been March. So March has the least amount of rainfall. And the question went on to further ask that you're to state one observation about the temperature in Port of Spain during the year. Now, based on the temperature that you're seeing, you, you are allowed to state only one observation. Now, persons may state the observation in different ways, but once it is linked to what the graph is showing, then CAC will have no problem with giving you the mark. So, for example, the temperature is basically high all year round, which is a very good observation. The temperature, the highest temperature is recorded in the wettest period and the drier season, the drier period, which, which would have been between January to March, January to April, sorry, and even March, they recorded the lowest temperatures while the temperature was higher during the wettest period. Section B it asks us to list two elements of weather. Now when we talk about weather elements, we're talking about the conditions of the atmosphere. So there are seven, some will classify them as six, but there are seven weather elements that you can list any two from. You have temperature, which is the hotness or the coldness of the atmosphere. You have atmospheric pressure, which is basically just the weight of the air pressing down on the Earth's surface and it is measured in millibars. We have wind direction and this is just the direction in which the wind blows. You have wind speed and that's basically how fast the wind is blowing and that's measured in knots. You have humidity and that's the water content of the atmosphere. We also have precipitation and this is just the movement of moisture from the atmosphere to the earth's surface. We also have clouds. Now clouds are just tiny droplets of water floating in the atmosphere. Section B, option 2, it goes on to ask you to define the term climate. Now, when we talk about the climate, we're talking about the average atmospheric condition of a place and it is usually recorded over a 30 years period. So whichever way you want to spin this option, once you ensure that you include the average atmospheric condition and it is recorded over a 30 years period, you should be good to get the two marks. Next, we're going to look at the tropical marine climate. So the question asks that you describe two characteristics, each of rainfall and temperature in a tropical marine climate. Now the tropical marine climate or the tropical marine area, its place is located between 10 to 20 degrees north and south of the equator. So this map is showing you the location of the tropical 
marine. So the Caribbean is a part of the tropical marine climate. We experience tropical marine climate. So a few things that you can make reference to is that for the rainfall, the rainfall in the tropical region, it is seasonal. So we have a distinct wet season which runs between June to this June to November which is what we classify as our hurricane season annually we receive between 1200 and 2000 millimeters of rainfall and because of our location we basically experience relief rainfall as it relates to the temperature the temperature is high all year round and the temperature ranges between 28 to 30 degrees celsius all year round however depending on the literature that you will read some will tell you that the temperature ranges between 25 to 30 degrees celsius anyone that you use should be okay and the dry season we have a distinct dry season as well that is between december and may question three states explain two ways in which water contributes to the weathering of rock now remember that weathering is the process by which the rocks at or near the earth's surface are broken down altered decayed or and they disintegrated into soil by elements of weather and living things institute now institute means in their original location good now Weathering that water contributes to are for example hydrolysis. Now this is where there's a chemical reaction between certain minerals in the rock with the hydrogen ion that is found in the rain water. We also have solution and this is basically where the water acts as a solvent and it basically breaks down chemical bonds in rocks that contains salt mineral and this basically causes the salt minerals to dissolve next step that you can further explain is carbonation and carbonation is where the carbon dioxide in the rainwater it mixes with the calcium carbonate in limestone to form a very weak acid known as calcium bicarbonate and this basically helps to dissolve and break down the limestone rocks and then we have frost action now the frost action is where the rocks they have some small holes or some tiny holes now what happens is that these tiny holes will basically um, act as attachment for water so water will be found within these tiny pores or the little holes so what happens is that these rocks if they had high altitude or high latitude what will happen is that the water in them at night they will basically freeze because of how cold it is now once it freezes it allows the pores to expand however during the daytime when the sun is up then these the, the frozen water will actually melt and what will happen is that the pores will contract so with this constant expanding and contracting or this constant freezing and towing over a period of time it will cause the rock to break down or to disintegrate question d asks explain the role of climate in the production of latter soil now latter soil they are often times called a tropical red earth soil because they are located in the tropics so these are basically soil that are found in the tropical region and they relatively they basically have a high content of iron and aluminum oxides now latter soils they are formed basically from deep leaching and chemical weathering so with leaching and chemical weathering they basically help to dissolve all the other materials except iron and aluminum now remember the tropical region it has a very hot and wet climatic condition because we experience very high temperatures as well as a very um, a very high amount of rainfall per annum due to the high rainfall that we have in the tropical region and the high temperatures this produces 
a lot of heat and moisture that basically reaches to great depth and what this does is that it rots the parent material into the soil so we have leaching and chemical weather happening rapidly because of the climatic conditions that we have in the tropical region thus the high temperatures and the high amount of rainfall it basically speeds up the chemical processing the weathering process so the rocks will be easily broken down in the tropical region because of the large amount of rainfall as well as the high temperature Now we're at the end of the video. If you would like to view question 3 of the May June 2018 past paper, please like, share and subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Until next time.